Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're gonna be unboxing a black stainless steel Whirlpool microwave with convection baking built right in. So you ready? Let's get into this. So going around the box here, it's pretty generic except for a couple of things. Number one, it has the extreme weight warning here telling you to use at least two people to carry this. This is one of the few things I've seen that you really need to heed that. This microwave weighs something like 80 pounds. It's heavy and that's likely due to the fact that it is a convection oven and microwave. So if you're thinking about installing this by yourself, I would really rethink that and think about getting somebody in there to help you. It's got dotted lines down here for you to follow because you're gonna cut along those lines and you're gonna lift up the entire upper part of the box instead of trying to pull the microwave out of it, similar to what you get with a dishwasher or something like that. Also something that I thought was pretty cool is you got another dotted line here cut out on the side of the box. And this is actually for the template that you put on the wall in order to line everything up and find your studs and cut the holes in your cabinets and everything else. So if you get a microwave like this, be sure not to trash your box because you're gonna need this to install it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this box open. I'm using scissors, but you should probably use a razor blade. And remember, don't cut too deep into the box because you're gonna run the risk of cutting into your microwave. I'm gonna revise that a little bit. When you cut the box open, there is a hard piece of wood down here at the bottom, so that will keep you from cutting all the way through, and that'll help protect your microwave on the inside. So let's go ahead and get this thing opened up. Okay, we'll get rid of these. So here we have our microwave rack. We've got our glass turntable. This is a cover for the vent on the top of the microwave. You probably won't use this, but if you plan on venting the microwave outside of the house, then you're gonna need this. There's my cat. He doesn't come in the box. There's all your mounting hardware. And you've got the power cable kind of neatly wrapped around in here, so we'll go ahead and pull that out. And back here, you've got your mounting bracket. This is actually what goes onto the wall into your studs, and really the microwave just hangs on these tabs rolls up and then you screw it in from the top. This is actually a little bit thinner and flimsier than I expected it to be, but must be good enough. <coughs> Tell you what, this is a very, very nice looking microwave here. Black stainless steel. It's got convection baking along with all the other microwave features that you expect to get. It's Wi-Fi, Google, and Alexa enabled. As far as Siri support goes, I'm not positive, but I think it is as well. In addition to all the microwave functions that this has, it also has convection bake. So this thing can double as a normal oven as well as a microwave oven. It was actually one of the big selling points for me on this. And it really expands the ability of your kitchen, especially if you don't already have a double oven. Inside, we got the other accessories that come with this. A little registration card. And then we can take all this out. And here, we've got a rack here for the convection function. And also, we've got this, which is a three-part steamer bowl. The way this works is there's your bottom, there's your steamer insert, and then here is the lid. If you want to steam vegetables in this thing, there's actually a setting for that on the microwave. And here we have the roller base for the turntable. And other than that, we have our aluminum filters and we have our user manual as well. And this has the installation instructions in it. Normally I just kind of flip these off the screen and throw them out, but in this case, I think I'll be reading this. This microwave was too expensive to be messing around with that, so we're gonna read for a change. And all this other stuff in here, we'll just leave it here taped up until we install the microwave, just for good measure. One really important thing to note before you install your microwave is how the ventilation is gonna work. Out of the box, these things are designed to circulate the air. So the air is actually gonna come in through the bottom and it's gonna vent out the top of the microwave here in the front. If you already have conduit run for outdoor exhaust, then you're gonna to have to open this little section up here and you're gonna to wanna to install this little flapper. But remember, once you've installed the microwave, you can't get to this, so it's something you have to figure out right off the bat before you put it up. Since we're recirculating, we don't have to do anything with this, and the microwave is pretty much ready to go. 
So now all we have to do is drill some holes, install a bracket, and put this thing up. So as you can see, we've already got our old microwave out, and I've got all my holes drilled and my bracket installed, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you really quick how I did that, just to make it a little bit easier on you if you get this particular microwave. Like I mentioned during the preliminary unboxing, the template is built into the box. And as you can see right here, I just went ahead and cut this out of the box. And this has got our measurements and everything already ready to go. Flipped one way, it's for the back wall here, and flip the other way is for getting the mounting locations up here in the bottom of your cabinet. To line this up for the wall bracket, you've got your A hole and your B hole already marked off on this. So all you gotta do is take this, put it into the space here, all leveled and lined up where your microwave is gonna go. In our case, it was really easy because we only have a 30 inch space here and that's the exact same size as this template so we didn't have to do tons of measuring. But you line this up, make sure it's level, on both sides. Then you see the marking for A right here and the marking for B right here. So all you do is drill a little pilot hole in both of those locations and then you can move this out of the way. And as you can see, that's right here and right here. When you're putting this bracket up, at least one screw has to go into a stud. And we were lucky because we had a stud in both locations here, so that's all we really needed. But I also had studs here and a stud here, which was where the original microwave was installed. So I just put two more of these lag bolts in here just to give it some extra stability. That's not really necessary, you only need two. But as far as I'm concerned, as long as I'm in there, why not? You can see a hook here and a hook here. The microwave is actually gonna be tilted up and set on these. There's little slots in the bottom of the microwave that these fit right into. And then you rotate the front of the microwave up and then you have two additional mounting screws that are put up in here. And that's all you need to secure it. Now, when we flip this over and put this up on the top, first of all, if you look really close, you can see the center line of this cardboard piece. I went ahead and marked that center line down here from when we had it sitting this way. That way you make sure that this is always lined up to itself because you can see this can slide around a little bit up here. We don't want that. We want the top and the bottom sections to be lined up exactly right. Otherwise, the screw holes aren't gonna line up either. So once you got those lined up, then you only have three holes left to drill. The top mounting screws go here where it says E and then up here where it says D. And then the only other hole that you have to drill is right here. And that's for the power cable to run through. So once you have all those drilled, you can see the hole for the power cable and a hole here and here for the upper mounting screws. Other than that, we should be ready to mount this thing. A couple of quick tips just to remember. Your mounting screws here that go into the top of your microwave, we're gonna go ahead and open these cabinets up and just kinda set these in here just so they're already ready to mount because we're gonna lift this thing up, it's gonna be heavy. We need these here and ready to install because we don't wanna be looking around for those while we're trying to hold an 80 pound microwave up in there. Also, once you get the microwave angled on here, you're gonna go ahead and fish the power cable through here right away because you're not gonna be able to do that any other time. You need to get that through there immediately. Okay, let's get the mounting. Hey, by the way, if this is your first time here and you wanna learn some cool new recipes, get some great cooking tips and tricks and all sorts of other cooking related things, then start now by subscribing to the channel and clicking the notification bell so you never miss a thing. Well, that was relatively painless. We fast forward to that, but that didn't take more than three or four minutes or so to get that up there. So the last thing I'll do is give you a quick tour of the microwave and what some of the features are. And then in a later video in a couple of weeks, we'll be able to give you a full review once you've had a chance to run through all the features and test everything out. As you can see, the door here is full length of the microwave. There's no control panel down here and handle like you would see in a regular microwave. It's actually back here on the side. So if we pull this open, you'll see that this actually opens very wide. It's got two levels in here. This shelf can be removed. And you got your turntable down here. And this thing is pretty freaking massive. Just a comparison for the size, this is the new one. And here is the one from my old microwave. Yep, that's pretty big. It's got a really nice matte type finish on the inside here. That's actually supposed to make it really easy to clean, but we'll see about that. And you can see they've used every bit of space because that turntable actually protrudes out right here just a teeny bit off the front of this. The capacity on this thing is something like two cubic feet. So it's big, it's a really big microwave. On the side here, this is the convection unit. Remember, this isn't just a microwave oven, this is a regular oven or a microwave that can also do convection baking. Whichever way you want to describe it, you're right. Looking at the front here, you have your information screen. Right now it's got the time here. 
You've got your numbers, which are gonna to correspond to microwave power settings and also keying in microwave time. So if you wanna microwave for a minute, it's one, zero, zero, and then you start. And then it turns everything on like it normally would. These are for scrolling back and forth through options. That is for selecting the option that you happen to have up on your screen. This button here is to turn the turntable on and off, the light settings, the fan settings, your digital timer, and probably set up options and setting the clock as well. Over here you have your connect button and that's to connect to Wi-Fi. So if you have this connected to your Wi-Fi, you can use stuff like Google Home or Amazon Alexa. But once you have that connected, you'll be able to get status updates, voice control the oven, and even remote start it. The last thing I need to show you is the cooking option, which is under the menu right here. Once you select this, then it brings up our menu of things we can do. You can convect, which is convection oven baking. You can do a smart defrost, soften and melt, so that's probably for ice cream and butter and delicate things like that. Steam and simmer, that's where the steamer I showed you earlier comes in handy. Warm and hold, which will just keep whatever's in there warm. Regular cooking time and power, so that's if you're changing power levels. The kids menu, which I'm not so sure of. Your auto cook feature, reheating stuff, vegetables, baked potatoes, and last but not least, the AccuPop for popcorn. The way this works is the microwave actually listens to your popcorn popping, and once the delay between pops exceeds a certain amount of time, it'll go ahead and just stop automatically for you. And hopefully you don't have burned popcorn in the process. One other option I want to try out on this oven is a Whirlpool exclusive in their app. And that is you can take frozen dinners and things like that, scan them with your phone, it will beam the information to the microwave, and it'll automatically cook it per the instructions on the box without you having to touch anything. I don't do a lot of microwave dinners, but if that feature works pretty well, that makes it a pretty good selling point for this thing. I'm really looking forward to trying out some of the features on this thing, most notably the convection bake feature. For me, that was the main reason we got this model, and it's the feature I'm most excited about trying out. If you check back in a few weeks, we should have a full review of this Whirlpool convection microwave oven. And hopefully it turns out to be as good as we're hoping it is. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about Joe's Phenomenal, you can watch a couple more videos or you can check us out online at joesphenomenal.com. I thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to watch this video. It really means a lot to me and I can't wait to see you back again here really soon. So until that time, I'm Joe and I hope you have a phenomenal day. Take it easy.